this week I finally got to do a canoe trip that I've been wanting to do for years. I've always driven past, but this time I stopped in. So, I'm currently just out on French River right now. Just got off at my little port and it's looking pretty overcast. Luckily, we're not supposed to get rain till at least eight, so hopefully I'll be able to get any type of shelter I need set up. I'm gonna be using my hammock and tarp tonight. So hopefully that's all strung up and set by the time we do get rained on. Should be a little while yet. I still have, I don't know, maybe six hours till we get rain. It's about somewhere between one and two right now. I haven't checked in a while, but some good canoeing. It's nice to finally get out here. I've never done French River. It's quite nice. For any of you who are interested, uh, I put in at a little launch on Hardy Bay Road, I think it was. And it was free, so that's always good. I wasn't sure how much I was going to have to be paying to park, but it's entirely free. I can just go out here and this whole trip is only costing me gas and food, at least thus far. So pretty nice, pretty smooth waters, pretty clear day so far. It was odd. The more I canoed along, I found that there was kind of two French rivers that I was looking at. There was a French river that was very domestic and a lot of really nice cottages. But then on the other side, there was just this rugged wilderness that looks like it's gone on unchanged for thousands of years. I noticed that even as I got further into the sections of the river that were actually part of a provincial park, that still there were some scattered cottages on privately owned little pieces of land, as well as motor boats that were occasionally passing by. It was a different experience for me. I've never actually canoed a river quite like French River before. I've canoed some smaller rivers and creeks, um, and I canoed a lot of lakes up in other parks, primarily Killarney, um, but I'd never done anything like this because it was really an odd combination of half lake, half river. You noticed it particularly at the tight points that it was really a, a more a river, and you'd actually notice the water flowing at points. After a few hours of paddling upriver, I made it through a few small bays and a small channel that I would later camp in to the main channel of French River, which interestingly enough is still actually used quite a bit today. I saw a couple boats in the time that I was just sitting there. It was very open and it was also very windy, so for just myself and a canoe, I decided I couldn't continue on that point. I turned back and looked for a campsite on Canoe Channel. It was much more protected and sheltered from the wind and had several nice spots for camping along it. I found this one section that seemed to have a overhang on it, almost a little bit cave-like, and that was too tempting to not at least investigate further, but unfortunately it looked like an absolute mess, and I don't know what did that, but it was not looking like somewhere I wanted to sleep. I ended up finding this other nice campsite just up from the water. It got pretty steep behind the campsite, which made the whole area quite narrow, but it also made it cozy in a sense. I was also obviously not the only person to ever camp on this campsite. So things are going pretty well so far. I've just got my whole, uh, set up done here and I'm just so happy that I have a bug net on that hammock and I'm starting to realize I should have brought a bug net for my head because you know I was thinking out here you know oh well it's springtime and so you know in springtime you might have high water levels and I was all concerned about that like the actual quality of the river didn't even think about bugs and they're so bad they are so very bad but at least tonight 
I'll sleep easy because got that bug net and that's something. So I've started cooking my dinner. Right now I'm just boiling the water for it. But I'm doing this a little bit away from my camp. It's because the last time, well usually you're supposed to do this a little bit away from your camp. So I'm trying to follow the right procedure. But uh, particularly the reason why I'm doing it this time is because of the food I'm eating. It's this Spanish peel off right here. And this stuff, I just, I just refer to it as bear attractant because the first time I ever went solo camping, I had this and this attracted a bear. So if you ever want to see some wildlife when you're camping, go for this stuff. I always like to tempt fate when I'm camping. But right now I'm doing this right sort of on the edge here and the smoke and the wind, the wind helps the fire, but also the smoke and the wind together is keeping a lot of the bugs away. So that's pretty nice. We got another speed canoe coming by. comes the wave. It started to rain only just a few drops at first shortly after I finished eating but with those first few drops it continued and carried on for the rest of the time that I was at French River. So I just finished up uh, eating making dinner and now it's nice because I'm getting into that point where I just have some downtime, make sure stuff's clean, set for tomorrow. Because tomorrow I'm gonna be starting nice, bright and early again, having to sort of make my way back out of here and then uh, on to Killarney. Um, but all's kind of good timing right now. It's just past six and it's actually starting to rain right now, which I was expecting to rain at about eight. And I think that was, was, that was what it was forecasted for, but Lo and behold, it's here a little early, but this is kind of nice for me. I know for most people, you know, the rain's kind of like, ah, oh, you know, rain ruins our camping trip. But um, at least for me, I find this is, it's like peaceful, it's tranquil. The hardest thing for me always is, is falling asleep when I'm camping out here. But I think with, with rain, it makes it kind of different because, well, for one, if it's really still, I can't sleep like that. It's like, you can hear every branch break, you can hear everything and you know it's like a squirrel can be in your mind a squirrel can become a bear or something like that so i always like having like a bit of you know noise or something like this and rain's great for that just like a little bit of noise it's very like almost white noise but it's i find it just very peaceful it helps me sleep just in general i don't know why that is maybe there's a scientific explanation for it but it's, it's nothing that i know so a little bit earlier than what I would have liked, but if it stays like this, which is kind of a light rain right now, I would happily take this for the next two days. This is lovely to me. It unfortunately did not stay that nice as I would find out the next morning. Okay, this is a good old fashioned Canadian bushcraft, right? And this is about as good old fashioned as it gets. Um, French River is one of the oldest canoe routes in Canada. It might be the oldest canoe route. I mean, part of it, we don't even know. Well, because the canoe is a native technology, we don't actually know when the canoe was first invented or, you know, how it was first invented, whether or not it was a dugout canoe, which it probably was, or with whether it was the uh, birch bark canoe, but they're old. The canoe is very old. It's like thousands of years old kind of hard to get an exact idea because of course they all deteriorated apart and they, they rotted away in time so we don't know precisely but we know based on some some findings some trade routes um that you know things were from here and they got from here to there it's like well you could have walked but probably not you probably went by water and about as long as people have been traveling by water in this area french river has been this really important canoe route for really connecting um, St. Lawrence River to the Great Lakes, or it's one of the ways that you can get through. It's one of the most used ways of, of doing that, really. So, um, 
Of course, it's called French River because it was used by the French uh, quite a bit when this area was New France. And the French were coming out here from, I think, as early as 1615 was probably when the first French were coming out here. Um, though don't quote me on that, I could be off by a few years, but it was the early 1600s. And this was the way at that time. So it was used by Jesuits and priests and missionaries coming out here. It was later used by fur traders. It was used by actually both native and European uh, fur traders quite extensively. So it's just a fascinating route. It's like so old, it's such an old part of Canada. Um, I've been wanting to come here for a long time, so I'm happy I finally get the chance. And I always like the kind of, you know, rainy, gloomy days. I feel that that's where history really looks best. So that's a little bit about the history of it. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna get out of this rain now. had a good lot of rain all through last night but luckily my system stayed dry here with the tarp over top and the in the hammock so I'm still perfectly dry it's gonna be hard to start a fire this morning but we'll see how it goes well I better get up and get a fire going and pack up and then it'll be out of French River onto Clarny Just loving it out here today. It's just, I'm actually loving it. This is my kind of weather right here. Well, at least the wind is at my back and that's something. So we're moving in the right direction. We want to go somewhere out in this area and the wind's kind of coming from back
Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on good old-fashioned Canadian bushcraft.